Hi, I'm Mike Turner, your friendly filmmaker, and today I want to show you some of the menu settings in the JVC LS300. Now, I made a similar vid video like this for the JVC 170U, and it seems like the viewers liked it, so I figured I would make a similar one for the LS300. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing more videos on the JVC LS300. Also, I'm going to review the Ceramonic UW My 10 system that I use for a variety of work. And I'm going to be doing another video for the Yi 4K Action Cam where I compare using the in-camera stabilization to using some type of cheap stabilizer that you can get off of Amazon. Should be a fun video, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, let's get started. All right, so let's just go over the uh, LCD screen and show you some of the things that you have here. You know, you have your, your battery life toward the top there. I have 145 minutes left on my battery. Uh, you have both cards. It will show you how many minutes are left on your cards. It will show you uh, what format you're shooting in. You know, 1920 by 1080 at 30p and at 50 megabits uh, per second. Then it also shows you your audio meters. If I had something plugged into channel two, you would see channel two moving up and down. You have your time code at the top, which you can reset to zero. Um, your date, your time, uh, whether you're in auto or manual focus mode. And it also will show you what level of ND you're using. So I'm only on a quarter. And you get to see your ISO, which you can also change to DB if you rather have it that way. And then it shows you your F-stop and your shutter speed at the bottom. And then this over here is telling me that I'm in full auto white balance. And if I was to flick my switch over here, you know, I can set it to one of the presets that I have. So that's just a look at the LCD screen and what it can lay out. You can also hit the display button and get rid of all that information or just leave some of it. There's also a status button here. And the status button will give you some more information, which is kind of nice. If your status it tells you quickly what your zebras are set to, so I got mine set to 70%. Marker aspect, I don't even know what the hell that is. Um, safety zone, that's, that's if you want to turn on the guides so that you can, you can see what, where video safe is on your uh, LCD monitor. It tells me what formats I have each um, drive set to. And it gives you even more information. It tells me that my gain levels are set to 400, 1250, and 3200. It tells me that I have, a, I have auto white balance set and it's set to the A preset. It tells me what speeds I have my handle set to, the handle zoom speed controller. And it shows me that the iris dial is actually set to iris because you could change that and make it operate your shutter speed or it could also operate your ISO and it's, it's also telling me that the zoom controller is currently set to zoom and not focus because you could set it to focus and the autofocus assist is off then it also tells you what you have all your user buttons configured to just at a glance you know what everything is set to you can change those if you wanted to it also shows you how you have your audio mapped It shows you um, your external ports. If I want to set up meta metadata, I can set up metadata and it would tell me what that was. It shows you the network settings because this camera does have uh, uh, a network port on it. So as you can see, the camera is pretty much laid out the same way the JVC 170U was. It's not really much difference in the menu. So in the camera function menu, there's a lot of items. Um, most of them relate to the buttons in the camera and uh, some of the basic settings, you know, zoom speeds and things like that. And then when you think of camera process, camera process pretty much deals with the image that's coming out of the camera. So that deals with your picture, that deals with the black levels, that deals with gamma, that deals with the detail. You know, all of this stuff here, knee levels, which is uh, basically your, your uh, highlights. Um, 
white clipping WDR, which is wide dynamic range, which somewhat increases the dynamic range of the, the camera by kind of, um, it kind of brightens up the black levels. This is mainly what it does. Gamma. Okay. So in gamma, you could set your gamma to ITU 709, which is Rec 709, which is basically broadcast quality. You could set it to cinema, or you could set it to JLog. So basically with one of the firmware upgrades for this camera, I think it was version two, JVC added JLog, which basically shoots in a flat picture profile. So if you're the type of person who likes to do a lot of your own color grading, you can set it to JLog and you can just kind of let your imagination run wild and just throw whatever colors you want in there. So that so it does have JLog and that JLog will also uh, expand your dynamic range. So if you're shooting in conditions where there's a lot of shadows, but then there's also a lot of bright in the image, a lot of brightness in your image, this will help you get more detail in that type of shot. So you do have that option. And as you can see in here, you can adjust all types of things. You know, you could set your white balance presets. So basically the little switch for your white balance, if you switch it all the way to the bottom, it switches to preset. And basically you can go ahead and tell the camera what you want those presets to be so that you can just toggle back and forth. So you set it to preset, then you hit your, your white balance button at the front of the camera and it will alternate between whatever two preset you set. So you set this one and you set the alternate to whatever you want and then it will toggle back and forth. So I always have mine set to 56K and 3200 because typically that's those are the two lighting conditions that I shoot in the most. You can also, uh, you can change your detail. So the sharpness in your picture, you can raise it, you can lower it a little bit if you don't like the way it looks. A lot of times I, I typically lower it a little bit. I'm surprised I have it on two. Put it on zero. You can change your mass of black levels. So you can, you can, you can, uh, you can see there, you could decrease the blacks. Well, actually increasing the black makes things more washed out. So as you can see here, as you increase the blacks, you make everything a little washed out. And as you decrease, things get darker. So you could go in and change that. I usually leave it at plus three. That's why I like it. Black paint. So basically you could change your blacks to have more of, of a red color in it or a blue color or green or yellow. So you can really fine tune your picture in here. There's, there's tons of things you could change. You could change the knee to manual, all types of stuff. So that was camera process. Now camera function, let's go through some of these things. You could turn off, you could turn on bars. You know, if I had a, a lens that had image stable, stabilization in it, you could turn it off and on. And actually, the funny thing is, um, when I connect lenses that do have image stabilization, I find that this doesn't really work. It's kind of useless. You really, you just turn it on and off through the lens. It, it, this doesn't really work. Uh, let's see here. You can change your shutter to variable or step. Now, here's something that's interesting. So you have AGC limit. That's auto gain control. You only have three levels of gain. You can, you can configure them to whatever you want, but you only have three levels. So one thing that you can do is you can set one of those levels to auto, and then you can set a limiter. So if I know this camera can't really do well past 3200 ISO, then I'm not gonna let it go past 3200 ISO. So if you set the limiter to 3200 and then set one of those um, presets to auto, it will just set it to whatever it feels is right, but it will never go past 3200. So basically I changed button six to work as variable gain. That allows me to press button six and then be able to change my gain in small increments using the up and down arrows. So I'll kind of show you what that does. 
Now I can use the up and down arrows to change it in small increments instead of just using the low, medium, and high. It's a very nice feature. Uh, one of the YouTube viewers uh, pretty much put me onto that because I didn't even know it existed. So here you have auto iris limit. So if you have an electronic lens connected to the camera, you can control how wide it can get. So if you know your lens doesn't do well when it's wide open at 1.8, then you can configure it so that the camera will, cannot go to 1.8, especially if you have your iris set to auto. That's what that's for. And it does the same thing in the closed position. If you know you don't want your lens to close down past f12 or something, you can set it. Well, you don't really have the option for f12, but f11. And here, here's where you can control the gain. So this is the gain switch. You got low, medium, and high. You only have three settings. You can control what those settings are. You can make them whatever you want. Change low to 640. And ISO, ISO 400 is the lowest ISO you can get on this camera. It does not go any lower than that. You can set, like I, like I mentioned, you can set it to automatic gain. So I can set the high one to automatic gain and it will, it will just go through 400 to 3200 ISO depending on my lighting conditions. You can change the, uh, the, the, the presets for the zoom on the top handle to whatever you want. Anywhere from one to seven is the speed. I find that one is actually pretty fast. <laughs> I, wish, I wish one was actually slower. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's actually too fast for me. And like I said, you could change the iris dial to be something other than iris. The, the most interesting thing about this camera is you can set the zoom control to be VR SM, or you can set it to be a power zoom. So basically what happens is if you have a lens on here that has power zoom in it, and it has to be a, a native micro four thirds lens, but if you have a micro four thirds lens that has a power zoom in it, you can set this to power zoom. And now when you use the zoom, zoom rocker on the side of the camera, it will operate the zoom in that lens. And I've tried it before and it certainly does work. So that's nice. Now this VR SMZ zoom, basically this is what JVC calls prime zoom. What this allows you to do is to zoom your prime lenses. So basically right now I have a 25 millimeter 1.7 lens on here. And as you can see, I can zoom it. So basically I'm zooming in and out with the prime lens. This is not a zoom lens, it's a prime lens. But it allows you to zoom because it's basically cropping the sensor for you. And of course you can set your switches to whatever you like. You can change them up. And then your preset auto, because there is a preset button. So when you go into preset auto, you can actually tell the camera, okay, when I have a switch to preset auto, I want my gain to be completely automatic, but I don't want my, my iris control to be automatic. I want to I wanna control the iris. Or you could say, you know, I want my shutter to be completely automatic, but I don't want my white balance to be automatic. I want to I wanna set that. So whatever I have my white balance set to, just use that. I mean, and those are the main things that I want to show you in camera function and camera process. As you notice, there's tons of things in there. You know, we could talk on that for probably about a few hours, but uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm not going to go into every single setting. And I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know every single setting in that. I'm just telling, showing you the ones that I know and that I use. I'm sure there's some other cool things in there that I don't even understand yet. You got LCD and uh, um, viewfinder. This just configures your LCD and viewfinder. So you can put different markers on the, the LCD. You can control the brightness, the contrast, and the viewfinder on the LCD. You know, it gives you all that, those options. Audio video set. Um, you can control the reference levels for the mic. So you can turn the mic levels down a little bit. If you have a mic that is a, a battery powered or something, and it's already giving kind of a hot level, you can turn down 
the inputs in your, your camera a little bit so you get really, really good sound. It's, it's really nice that it lets you do that. Plus, you can set a limiter. So you can set a limiter to your uh, different audio channels. And then, of course, you have wind filters that you can turn on. This gives you all types of stuff. And again, it lets you to configure the preset auto. So you can switch it so that the audio is completely auto when I set it to the preset or not. And it's the same thing for full auto too. You can, you can change that. And then the video set, this really deals with, you know, the, um, the ports that are on the camera. This deals with your HDMI port, your SDI port, um, and all that type of stuff. So, and how it will display on your television or whatever you're, you're outputting onto, um, you know, if you have an external monitor, this is how you configure all that type of stuff. And system. Now let's talk about system because there's, there's definitely some interesting things in system as well. So, first thing, let's talk about record format. So here we go. So in the record format, you can record in HD, you can record in SD, which I don't know why anyone would these days. You can record in HD plus web, which basically records HD and a smaller SD file at the same time. So basically you can record HD and then I guess if you want to record a smaller proxy file, you could do that. I don't know why you would do that. It would make more sense for it to be 4K plus web. I think that would make more sense, but anyway, not a big deal. But you can also record in Cinema 4K and Cinema 2K. You can also record high speed. And a little bit further up at the top, you can record in regular 4K. So Cinema 4K is slightly bigger, but it gives you the option of shooting in both. Now, when you're in 4K, you can either shoot in 150 megabits per second or 70 megabits. So if you have a card that's not that fast uh, in terms of write speed, you can slow it down. You can slow down your bit rate. It's not gonna be as uh, sharp and crystal clear, but it's still gonna look pretty good and you can get that information on your card without a problem. I'm just gonna cancel out here. Let's go back in there. So let's go into high speed, because I like this. You have high speed settings in this camera. So you can, you can shoot at 60 frames per second on a 24p video. So now when you put this video on a 24p timeline, it's automatically slowed down. Nice feature. Uh, you can also shoot 120 frames per second on a 24p um, timeline. And you can see here, there's various options. You could do 30p, you know, you could do uh, 60, 30p, 120, 30p, 50, 25p, you know, so th it gives you some, some options. So that's, that's really, really cool. Now just keep in mind when you, when you use this setting and you're shooting 120 frames per second on a 24p timeline, basically, what happens is it's still shooting at a 50 megabit data rate. So basically you're getting less image quality because you're shooting more frames, but you're still only shooting them at 50 megabits per second, the same way you would just shoot 24 frames per second. So you're losing quality. So keep that in mind. As you go higher and higher, you use, lose more and more quality. So I just wanted to show you those. I'll cancel out of here. And then of course you have the variable scan mapping. Now let's get into this because this is probably one of the coolest features of this camera. So here, if I had a lens on this camera, and matter of fact, I think I'm just gonna show you how this works. So right now this lens is a micro four third lens and it's really hard to see. But in the corners, I mean in the very, very tip of the corner, you'll see a little vignetting. I mean, it's so minimal on this lens. I mean, despite the fact that it's a micro four thirds lens, it pretty much covers the whole spread of the sensor. But if it didn't, I would just crop in. And hit enter. And now the picture crops in a little bit and you don't get any vignetting. So let's go back there for a second. And that's all I need for this lens, 
but the real Micro Four Thirds range is 80%. So most Micro Four, not most, but some Micro Four Third lenses will require you to crop in this much. So you can see how, how closer that chair just came now because I'm cropped in 80% onto, onto the sensor. Well, really 20%, I cropped in 20. Now let's go back And you can, you can crop all the way in to 43%. So if you had a Super 16 lens on here, this is actually Super Super 16, you could crop all the way in so that you could use that smaller lens on this camera. If you had some other lenses that were even smaller, you could keep cropping in to use it. Really a cool feature. Not a lot of cameras allow you to do that, but this one does. Now record modes, let's talk about this because one of the nice things that this camera also does is it allows you to um, shoot time-lapse videos. And the way you would do that is by setting it to interval record. And you could shoot at one frame every five seconds or one frame every second or one frame all the way up to one minute. So you could do some interesting time-lapse videos with this camera, straight out the camera. It's really, really a nice feature. Or you can leave it in normal. You also have pre-record too. So you can set the camera to pre-record your shots. So basically there's a buffer in the camera. So every time I hit the record button, it's basically gonna record 15 seconds before I clicked on that button. So just in case you're shooting something, some live event and you forgot to hit record, and it's like, oh, oh and you just remember like, you know, six seconds later, you hit that button, no problem. So that's pretty much it for record set. Uh, media is just where you're gonna format your cards. So we don't need to check that out. You got the tally lamp on top of the camera. You could turn that off. You don't have to leave that on. And then of course, just the basic stuff here. Now that's really all the main functions of the camera that I wanna go through in the menus. There's a lot of other things and like I said, there's some things that I don't even understand what they are. Uh, I think load and store file is, uh, you, can, you can save your presets. So you can save your presets to the card. There is no card in here, so it's not gonna work. But I could save my presets, and if I had another JVC camera, I could take the presets from this camera and put it on another JVC, or if for some reason I had to do some type of hard reformat of this camera or like a factory reset, I can then put my presets back into the camera. So all my color profiles and all that other stuff, I can kind of put it back in there. Um, another thing that's kind of nice with this camera, I'm just gonna show one last thing. There is a, a favorites menu that you can set up. So you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, that it says display favorites. So basically what that's telling you, if you click the display button, it's gonna save whatever that menu item is to your favorites menu. So to get to the favorite menu, you just hit display and you'll get your favorites menu. So this is what I have in my favorites. I quickly wanna to get to variable scan mapping a lot of times. I quickly wanna to get to formatting my media. Uh, changing the zoom control sometimes is nice. Uh, the record mode, being able to quickly turn, turn that back to normal. WZR sometimes I'll use. The alternate temp for my white balance, I can change that to whatever I want quickly on the fly. So, you know, little things like that. You can put whatever you want in here. It's really nice having that menu. Um, it just makes things go a little quicker for you. So I just thought I would show you that. So there you have it. If you found that video to be helpful, please go ahead and like it. Subscribe to my channel for more videos where I'll talk about other cameras that I use and other audio equipment and filmmaking techniques and beyond. Anyway, I'm Mike Turner. Thanks for watching and I guess I'll see you soon.